Hi guys, I'm Dr. Andrew uh, Iraniha from Surgical Oasis Institute. I'm a, a board certified general surgeon and uh, I have been practicing in Southern California, Orange County for the last uh, 20 years and as part of my practice I do uh, liposuction and uh, uh, liposculpting as part of body contouring uh, procedures. Um, today I want to uh, talk to you about the uh, liposuction and liposculpting in my practice and take you through the journey from the time of the consultation until uh, the end of uh, recovery. So body image uh, has an important role in the uh, psyche of both uh, um, gender. In other words, a female uh, wants uh, to have uh, um, healthy uh, uh, the tone with the athletic uh, figure and the desirable um, curvature. And uh, in men, um, they are uh, looking for a, a powerful muscular and uh, athletic appearance. And uh, these type of uh, body um, habitus, uh, they uh, bring and signify vitality, um, uh, youth and reproductive um, health. But what happens uh, throughout the years is that uh, uh, patients develop uh, excess fat, uh, extra skin and, uh, and muscle laxities and uh, normally due to um, age and also obesity uh, or some genetic factors that involve as well as uh, multiple pregnancies, uh, people uh, gain extra weight uh, by uh, um, accumulating fat uh, around the um, abdomen and then um, uh, developing extra loose skin and also muscle laxity and that cause uh, uh, unwanted uh, and unsightly abdominal uh, appearance. So liposuction or liposculpture is the procedure that address uh, fat and contour of the body. So essentially we are removing extra uh, fat, we are restoring the initial curvature and sculpting the body in a more desirable uh, condition. So when patient comes in initially to my office for free consultation, uh, I spend uh, uh, close to 45 minutes to discuss with them in, uh, about uh, their uh, medical history and their expectations and their issues. We do a full uh, history and physical exam and uh, determine whether the patient is a candidate for surgery or uh, not. Uh, obviously, uh, people who have more uh, uh, tight uh, and uh, elastic uh, skin and also more toned uh, muscle, they are much better candidate for uh, this type of uh, operation. However, patient expectation is extremely, extremely uh, critical. Uh, we need to make sure that they uh, understand uh, what they will uh, um, end up to have and uh, uh, if they have a very poor uh, um, um, outcome I usually do not recommend them to have this uh, operation but uh, uh, that type of uh, consultations uh, we go over the patient's expectation as well. Um, people who are extremely obese uh, more than BMI of 30 and usually they're not a good candidate for uh, liposuction initially. The BMI is the uh, ratio of their uh, uh, weight and height and we calculate that uh, during the first initial uh, examination and then obviously if they are extremely obese we recommend them to go under some sort of a, a diet regimen or um, some sort of a bariatric surgery or, uh, or weight loss operation uh, prior to uh, being a candidate for uh, liposuction. People who are smoked, they're not a good candidate for liposuction, so they need to be um, uh, basically um, committed to uh, quit uh, smoking. Um, also people who are um, diabetic and they don't have a good uh, control of the blood sugar, they are on blood thinner or they are on some sort of a steroid uh, that they have a, um, a higher uh, risk of uh, uh, complications uh, uh, with this type of uh, operation. Now, there are some uh, um, workup that we need to be done uh, before uh, proceeding with the surgery. So after I uh, do the um, initial consultation, I send the patient for uh, doing some simple uh, blood work uh, as well as EKG and chest x-ray depending on their age. 
and then we also send some of the patients that have medical issues to the medical doctor to have medical clearance prior to the surgery. People who have diabetes, they need to have a very uh, tight uh, uh, blood sugar control before they are a good candidate for surgery. If they uh, were smoking, they are committed to stop. They need to stop the smoking at least a minimum of uh, two weeks, so the more better. Um, if they're taking blood thinner, uh, they need to um, stop the blood thinner depending on the type of blood thinner that they take and usually that will be discussed during the time of surgery and before the operation. Now, um, the day before surgery, they need to have a very light meal and uh, nothing to, to drink after the uh, midnight. Um, in the morning, they take a shower with uh, heat cleans and they come uh, on time to the uh, surgery center and they uh, need to uh, fill out some oral uh, at that time. And they need to wear very uh, loose uh, um, uh, outfits, very comfortable outfits and then if they're taking blood pressure medication in the morning of the surgery, they can take those medicines with the sips of water per instruction. Now, the uh, day of the surgery, when they arrive to the surgery center, initially they uh, fill out a um, health questionnaire again. Uh, we want to make sure that we go over their health issues once more. And um, so because of some of these patients, they have uh, the initial consultations with the month before the surgery. So we want to go over that again one more time with the anesthesia surgeon and the nurse in, that involved in, the, in this procedure. We uh, want uh, to mark the patients for the area that are undesirable and needs to be um, uh, taken care of and discuss that with the patients. We want to get before and after a picture. Uh, and uh, because of that, the patient needs to sign a form for um, consent for the uh, uh, photography and also consent for surgery and uh, anesthesia. The other uh, form that they need to fill out is an advanced directive, which means that they, if they have a, a person um, or family member that uh, can make a decision during the emergency, they need to sign that form. And also, they uh, need to um, um, have a list of their current medication in order to go over that medicines again and to make sure that they're not uh, taking any medicines that is not uh, uh, appropriate for this type of um, surgery. Now, the day of the surgery, we also discuss about the anesthesia. Uh, the anesthesia type uh, really depends on the extent of the liposuction. If it's very minimal and localized area of the liposuction, normally we do uh, very light uh, sedation with the medicine and also a local anesthetic, which we call it Tumescent, uh, tumescent anesthesia is a diluted uh, um, lidocaine with epinephrine in uh, saline that we inject in the abdominal wall and that numb the skin for us to do the uh, um, liposuction. It also decreases the risk of bleeding during and after the, the surgery. But uh, if the patient wants to have a, a, a very comprehensive um, uh, liposuction, uh, including front, uh, um, side and back, uh, then it has to be done with the, the general anesthesia for the comfort and ease of the operation. All of the patients they get IV access uh, before they go. All the patients with the liposuction they will be done in an outpatient setting, so they get the surgery and they go home uh, the same day. The uh, day of the surgery after the operation, which again takes between one to three hours, depending on the extent of the liposuction, and they will uh, come out and uh, in a stay in the recovery room between one to uh, three hours, and they will be under the monitor, and we give them pain medicine to make them comfortable. They also get nausea medicine uh, to uh, make sure that they don't have nausea or vomiting. Uh, nausea and uh, feeling groggy and pain is very normal after the surgery. Some of the patients uh, that they go under general anesthesia because they get a plastic tube that connect them to the ventilator for them to get oxygen during the surgery. They can have a little sore throat after the operation. A yeah, little difficulty urinating the first 24 hours is very uh, common after the uh, surgery. 
and then a uh, majority of times uh, these patients they will get abdominal binder or uh, compression garment that uh, helps them for the pain and, uh, and discomfort after the uh, surgery. Now, uh, the uh, first uh, a few days after the surgery, usually uh, people um, will have uh, pain and discomfort, and that really depends on the, uh, again, a month and extent of uh, liposuction. Uh, they will have some uh, swelling and uh, bruise. Uh, they will have uh, some uh, drainage from the uh, uh, liposuction holes. And some of these patients that I do uh, 360 degree or very comprehensive uh, liposuction, they will have a drain uh, that uh, needs to be um, taken care of after the surgery. Difficulty in sleeping is very uh, common after the operation and uh, also difficulty urinating which again lasts one or two days after the uh, surgery. People can get a little bloated and uh, constipated which is usually a result of lack of mobility and anesthesia medicine and also narcotics which usually again go away uh, very quickly after the, the surgery. The, uh, the patient need to expect the uh, um, final results within three to six months after the surgery depending on the extent of the liposuction. Now, the, uh, um, the day that they go home, um, right after the surgery, I want them to have a very light dinner with plenty of uh, water. Uh, we give them um, appropriate antibiotics or anti-inflammatory medication as uh, needed. Uh, uh, they also will have uh, uh, um, um, uh, the device for uh, um, uh, abdominal binder or a compression garment that they put on um, that decrease their pain and discomfort. Uh, they will have uh, um, a, a follow-up uh, one day after the surgery and also these patients, especially when we do very extensive uh, liposuction because they accumulate a lot of fluid in that area, uh, in the first uh, two weeks we have more frequent visits um, uh, for them to come in for, uh, uh, for uh, manual massage and the drainage of the, uh, of the liquid. Um, these uh, patients, uh, we recommend them to have uh, deep breathing after the surgery and walking as much as uh, possible. And again, they can shower the next day and they have to take care of the drain and they do the appropriate uh, dressing change. Um, after the surgery, um, the recovery usually depends on the extent of the uh, um, operation and uh, liposuction. Normally, the first uh, um, uh, couple weeks, they would have uh, pain and discomfort. Uh, the bruise usually lasts uh, up to three weeks to go away. Uh, the recovery takes three to um, six months uh, before they can see the final results. And during that uh, three to six months, they would have on and off swelling and sometimes the swelling is not even and they can get they can see the irregular contouring and uh, uh, um, unevenness uh, would usually uh, go away after if you like this uh, video uh, please uh, uh, like the video and subscribe to my uh, channel i have uh, uh, many more um, educational videos as well as the actual surgical videos which might be your interest uh, and uh, also if you could uh, share that with uh, your friends uh, that are interested to know about these uh, subjects. Uh, you also can uh, call me uh, directly to my office 949-646-844 for free consultations or uh, whether in my office or telemedicine and uh, I'll be happy to uh, also respond to your comments under the video.